There's heaps and heaps of mathematics in The Simpsons and we already talked about some of it. Um, there's one equation which occurs more often than any other equation in The Simpsons. Uh, like in a recent video we had Pythagoras theorem and we had two occurrences of that, identified two occurrences of that. Uh, now this particular equation or identity uh, comes up three times. So let's just see what it is. Milhouse, there was a guy who pulled even bigger pranks than me. Wow! Imagine his sidekick! There we go. There on the t-shirt. Let's just uh, enlarge it a bit. So it says e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. Very mysterious. Many mathematicians think this is the most beautiful thing ever. Uh, even better than Pythagoras theorem. Okay, and what I want to do today is kind of make sense of this identity. It's, it's called Euler's identity, um, named after a very famous mathematician, Leonard Euler. Um, and it's quite mysterious. So it's got lots of, uh, you know, uh, friends in there, mathematical friends, 0, 1, pi, e and i. Maybe e and i you're not familiar with, but let's see how we can make sense of this. Um, and actually, as far as possible, I want uh, the Simpsons to help us make sense of this. Okay, before we do this, the other two instances of this equation. First one here is uh, here on a maths book that Lisa is using. And the second one occurs in an episode where Homer stumbles into the third dimension. It's just a different form where you kind of take minus one on each side and then it goes e to the i pi is equal to minus one. Okay, now uh, quite a few of you won't be familiar with E and won't be familiar with I. So let's just see what, what the Simpsons can tell us about these two numbers. Okay, first, E. Tonight's Simpsons episode was brought to you by the symbol umlaut and the number E, not the letter E, but the number whose exponential function is the derivative of itself. Right. Okay, so what does it say? Uh, that mystery number E uh, to the power of x is the derivative of itself. Hmm. That's quite mysterious. So let's just figure out what that means uh, and what, what E actually is. So let's just look at an another uh, exponential function that we're maybe more familiar with, like 2 to the power of x, okay? 2, two we know. Now 2 could be e, we don't know, right? Now if, if that was um, um, e to the x, then uh, we would have this property here. We can actually do this graphically, this derivative business. Okay, so we look at any point, okay? We look at any point and we look at the kind of tangent line to this point. This, and now we have a look at the slope of this line. Now the property that uh, the derivative business is talking about is that the slope of the exponential function at any point is equal to the value of the function at this point. Right? So if, if this was the real thing, this is what we wanted to be after, then the slope of this line here would be the same as this, this distance here. Okay, so this, this is the function value. Okay, and that should be the, the case at all points of this uh, function or this graph. Now there's one point here where it's actually where all the exponential functions are the same, um, you know, any number, you know, to the power of zero, well, positive number to the power of zero is equal to one, okay? So they all pass through this point here. And here we can actually quickly evaluate what the slope of, of, of the line is. What's the slope of the line here? That, well, that's one and that's larger than one. So the slope is one divided by something that's larger than one, less than one. So it's not equal to one. It's not equal to the value. What that tells us immediately is that two is not e, right? Because in the exponential function, uh, that slope would be one. So where would it actually pass through this line if, if the slope was one? Well, it would pass through this point because then we would have one divided by one um, that's one, it's equal to, you know, that value here. So let's just see what happens when we change this to, what changes to the graph and how the, the line changes. So we're not going to go and up two. So here we go, we're going up and up and up. And we just pass to the point or we overshot. So we're going to just backtrack a little bit and we're going to just take it slowly now, slowly, slowly, slowly creeping up to that point until it passes exactly through there. And what do we get? about 2.71.
So E is about 2.71, okay? Um, so there it is. That's, that's e to the power of x. And actually, when we, we talk about exponential functions, um, usually people say the exponential function, and when they say the exponential function, they actually mean e, e to the power of x. And I, I, I actually also use this from now on. So I say the exponential function mean this guy. Right? So the slope at this point here is the same as the function value. And well, it's supposed to be the same for, for, for all points here. And there's another point where we can actually check this quite nicely. So if we go here, e to the power of 1 is just e. Well, there's 2.7, that's about right. And now if we put in the line, if we put in the line, it passes through 0 here. And that means that the slope here is e divided by 1. Very nice, right? e divided by 1, of course, is e. So the slope of the line is equal to the function value here. And it works for everything else. All right. Now, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to evaluate the exponential functions at i pi. Well, we all know what pi is. The Simpsons also know what pi is. Um, I'm not going to go into that. It's a whole another video. But what's i? Well, there is um, one other occurrence of i in the whole of Simpsons, and I'll just show you what that is. Uh, well, Homer's looking at this, this joke here, and I've actually got the joke here on a t-shirt too. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's lots of mathematical symbols here. And so for example, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Uh, that's a sum, and that's pi. So 8 sum pi. And actually to complete the whole thing, you just have to say i 8 sum pi. So this is i. i is squared of minus 1. That's a strange number, right? That's a strange number. So if you haven't never seen it before, that's not one of those numbers, not like one, two, three. It's a, it's a, it's a complex number. Okay, um, now let's have a look at this. So how are you ever going to evaluate e to the, well, i maybe. I mean, there's, i is not down there, so we can't really just go i and up. Can't do that, right? Uh, and actually, the, the Simpsons are not also very helpful in this respect. For, for, for doing that, we actually have to have a look at um, like one of the absolute gems of calculus. And I'll just bring it up now. So this is, it's, an, it's another um, uh, identity. So we've got e to the power of x. So the exponential function is equal to this infinite sum here. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, what does it say? Well, basically, if you want to figure out what e to the anything is, you just put the anything in here, uh, add up those infinitely many terms, and you got it. I mean, that sounds like a that sounds like a weird thing to do, right? Infinitely many terms, hard to add up, but actually, it is incredibly practical apart from being very pretty. Why is that? Well, I mean, have you ever tried uh, evaluating something like two to the power of um, you know two thirds by hand? Hard, right? Well, if you've got e, then uh, if you've got this, this, this expression here, to figure out what, what e to the power of anything is actually not a big deal, or at least to approximate it is not a big deal. Because you just put it in here, so for example, e to the power of 2, right? Um, e squared. You just put a 2 in here, a 2 in there, and 2 in there, and 2 in there. Like all these terms are very easy to calculate. It's just multiplication. Right? Then to add them up to a certain point is also not very hard. And the other nice thing about these sums is that the more terms you add, the closer you get to the real value. And for all practical purposes, you can actually stop at some point in time and get things as close as you want. So for example, if you wanted to figure out what E itself is, we just substitute one in here. Okay, that's E. Then one in there, one in there, one in there, one in there. Add up all the stuff up to a certain point, and we basically get what, what E is. So in this case, 2.71828182884. Um, okay, yeah. And we don't we don't need all infinitely many terms. We don't only need to up, up to a certain point to 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 get that close. All right. So that's something very very pretty. Um, also, I mean, for, for those of you who've just kind of uh, started learning calculus, uh, you can actually try this business with the, uh, the function is the derivative of itself. So you know how to uh, find the derivative of x, you know how to find the derivative of x squared. So just unleash what you think should be unleashed on something like this. Just find the derivative of this thing and you'll be surprised, right? So when you do the derivative of this, just formally, 
uh, without thinking of what this actually means, um, the whole thing will actually uh, replicate. So, you know, that some, some sort of evidence that this might actually be true. Okay, now another thing that we can do with an expression like this is we can actually um, use it to define the exponential function for other sorts of numbers that can be multiplied and um, uh, added. So, for example, the complex numbers. Okay, so we can figure out what e to the power of i is. How? Well, we have to substitute here. i is that. What's i squared? That's minus 1, so get that. What's uh, i to the power of 3? What's i cubed? i cubed is i times minus 1. And uh, i to the power of 4 is just 1. Okay, and then we'll just add up all the terms that don't have an i in it. It's every second one here. That gives us this number here. And then we add up all the terms that have an i in it. That gives us that number there. That's a complex number here. And so in this way, we figured out what uh, e to the power of i is, or we've defined what e to the power of, of i is. Okay, and then, well, once we've got that, it's also not a big deal to do what the identity asks us to do. So let's chuck those guys in, and that's what it is. Right? And now, if you again do this guy here, plus that guy here, plus that guy here, so every second one, that actually really adds up to minus 1. And if you add up all of those guys here with the i in front of it, they actually all cancel out eventually to 0, and this gives you uh, our identity. Now, you can actually do this, this adding up business, maybe to 50 terms, and you can convince yourself, yeah, we're getting really close to minus 1 uh, in terms of the non-i terms, and we're getting close to 0 in terms of the i terms, and you know that's pretty good evidence that that might actually be true. Mm. Now, you can actually do a real proof of this, well, and uh, I, I just can't, cannot not do it. <laughs> so I'll actually tell you how the proof roughly works. Okay? So apart from E having a, a nice um, way of writing it, like this as an infinite sum, all sorts of other uh, of our favorite functions also have similar ways of, of expressing them. So for example, uh, sine and cos have uh, ways of uh, expressing them as, as infinite sums like this. So let's just have a look here in the red box and in the purple box. What you see, the terms that you see in the, in the red box um, are pretty much exactly the terms that you see in the purple box. Well, there's some difference, and the differences are the, in these, these, these uh, negative signs there. Now, you can fix things up by substituting ix for x, and by just multiplying through with i here at the bottom. And when you do this, uh, you'll actually find that all of a sudden everything that you see in this box uh, occurs down here and the other way around. So it's actually exactly the same stuff in here that's up there. So that's, that's fantastic. So what that means is that formally at least, what you see up here should be the sum of those two guys. Right? And so this, this here is, is, is a very, very famous formula. It's called Euler's formula. And Euler's formula quickly leads you to that. Well, there's e to the ix. So we just you know, substitute um, pi in here. That gives you cos of pi is minus 1. And sine of pi is 0. And so that whole thing turns into that guy here in one, one stroke. Now, I mean, if you just look at it as somebody who um, you know, comes from outside mathematics, you would think, well, they're just playing silly games here. I mean, so there's the exponential function. That's really tangible. It really means something. I can see why this should be important. But why should this thing be important at all? Uh, why should we waste our time talking about this sort of stuff? Well, um, it actually turns out that these identities, these um, these equations are incredibly useful, incredibly applicable. Um, it's one of those things where you know you kind of start out with something very tangible, and then you kind of go into an abstract world, and there's all sorts of tools that you have available. You can use them uh, and actually bring them to bear on on stuff that you might really be interested in. And this formula here is like one of the centerpieces to a tool set that any electrical engineer. Um, uh, will know very, very well. And so whenever you're talking about um, trigonometric functions, um, 
keeping this, this identity in mind is always a very good idea because it often yields to very nice ways of, of expressing things, of nice ways of, of getting to the point very quickly. I just want to give you one example what comes out of this, something very tangible that comes out of this. And like one of your homework exercises is going to be uh, to figure out how can you use this to get to this really tangible thing. So the really tangible thing is this formula here. Uh, it's a double angle formula. So this is all about angles, right? So there's an angle x, and if we know the sine of this angle, and if we know the cos of this angle, this formula tells us what uh, the cos of double that angle is, right? So it's really angles in the plane. And to show this, there's no easier way than to go via this uh, Euler's formula. And as I said, it's a, it's a centerpiece to, to a lot of what, what electrical engineers are doing. And if, you, um, if you're really interested, there's a couple of, well, at least one really, really nice book written about this identity, this formula here, and it's actually written by a former engineer. So that tells you <laughs> uh, something. So now you know the Simpsons' favorite identity, you know mathematicians' favorite identity, you know electrical engineers' favorite identity, and hopefully it's also one of your favorite identities now. And uh, that's it for today.